Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to some of the most interesting people in the world of pop culture. And this week on the show, we have got um, a guy who has been there, done that, and bought the t-shirt when it comes to rock and roll. Uh, he's been a musician for over 20 years. Uh, he was in this very successful band, Three Days Grace, and then decided to step away from that band and do the unthinkable, start his own project. And wouldn't you know it, that project did really well as well. Uh, he's from the band St. Asonia, and his name is Adam Gontier, and we're really, really happy to be welcoming him on the Rockman Power Hour. But before we get too far, let's bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan, my man, what is going on? He's been there, done that, and many people have bought his t-shirt. I like that better. See, yeah, that's why yeah. you need to be doing this and not me. Um, <laughs> I really liked our chat with Adam today. Uh, he's he's an, uh, an, a nice guy, very mild-mannered dude. You know, um, for for a lead singer, he's uh, he's very he seems almost reserved. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, and when we discussed um, the EPs that the last two EPs that Saint Sonia dropped, are introvert and extrovert. Uh, he shed some light on that, and it makes sense. Well, it makes a lot makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you could always see the type of people that have been doing it for twenty years and are like you know pale imitations of what they used to be. But yeah. in his case, he seems to be exactly at the level he was when I when I first heard him sing. So that's oh, pretty yeah. amazing, man. Yeah, yeah, he's he's a great singer and he's had a, a tremendous amount of success um, in his career. And and it was really really nice to catch up with him. Uh, but I must tell you, Ryan, that we would not be able to do this podcast if it wasn't. Uh, due to the generosity of our title sponsors, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. And I wanted to bring in this bottle that has been um, one of my favorites lately. I've been talking about it the last couple of episodes, Pineapple pineapple <laughs> Habanero. Have you really? tried the pineapple habit? It is tasty. I, Melissa's allergic to pineapple. So if I like have that hot sauce and make out of her, like, I just don't want to harm her with, right. with, the, with the vicious taste of of hoppy, heartbeat hot sauce you know so she's so she's yeah. allergic to pineapple there's not a chance in hell that you have this in your house or if you know yeah, well no, you're we, sneaking we, it when she's away well we do it's just you know it's you sealed know, it's kind of, it, yeah <laughs> it's it's sealed i uh, you know i use it to barter you know like you know <laughs> it's sealed it and it's gun. in my it's in my regifting pile <laughs> all right so check out heartbeat hot sauce there are title sponsors uh with the rockman power hour a great hot sauce company out of thunder bay ontario and if you use our promo code rockman 20 right down there i appreciate the sound effects you will get 20 percent off your entire order and you can use that code over and over again as much as you uh as much as you want so check out heartbeat hot sauce we love them they're wonderful wonderful uh partners and we love uh, working with a product that we enjoy right ryan absolutely it's uh it's really nice not to uh not fake it when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, what we enjoy. But luckily, so far in this podcast, we've never really had to fake it when it comes to uh, something we enjoy, including Studio House Design shirts. That is a wonderful tie-dye shirt. I always, whenever I talk to Cody from Studio House Designs, we always joke around because he's always trying to get me into a tie-dye shirt, and that just will not happen. I don't wear tie-dye, I'm not a hippie, and I don't follow the Grateful Dead. So maybe I, I don't <laughs> feel like this makes me a deadhead. No, I it feel doesn't. Like it it me, doesn't. It's you know. my own neuroses around tie-dye. I just can't do tie-dye, but... <laughs> God knows people love those tie dye shirts and um, studio house designs, very, very generous uh, sponsors of the podcast as well. Uh, keeping us looking fresh. So thank you very much to studio house designs. Um, I love the 13 go shirt. Really, really cool. I, okay. I'm glad you brought that up right before we jump into this interview. And I didn't want to bog down the interview because I half thought he would just be like, why are you telling me this? But I think it's a funny story. Yeah. Back in the day, uh, I think it was about 18 years old when uh, they really started to hit Three Days Grace mm -hmm. and much music was playing their stuff all the time. Yep. And I just remember his, uh, you know, his hair. Yep. <laughs> and I remember seeing the music video all the time. And my friend, Steph Ely, shout out to Steph Ely. We're, we're at, hanging out at her place after my old band, Judgmental, played. And there was a bunch of us that just hung out at her place. So it was deep in the West Island. We were there for like three days. And grace and uh, i was the, just uh, gonna jump on that and yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait for me and the ring the movie the ring had just come out on video mm, great and it was like this legendarily scary movie it was kind of like my generation's exorcist where people oh, yeah. are like yeah. oh god you gotta see this movie it's freaking crazy yeah. so we're watching it and uh my friend christina my friend uh, jen were very scared by the movie and when they went to the bathroom uh, steph and i proceeded to turn all the televisions in the house to the scrambly station oh. to emulate the scariness of the film and it scared them so much that they ran into the bathroom and then we started banging on the wall 
And then five minutes later, we felt really bad. So we're like, okay, I wonder where they are. So we knock on the door and we kind of open the door and realize that the bathroom window is open and that they have elected to run through the suburbs and their socks through thorny bushes than to stand in there. So mean. In the house You're so mean. We were scaring them. Yeah. Well, we weren't like, it wasn't like that's, I don't know. We're talking like about 15 to 20 seconds of fear. Yeah. But uh, I, we didn't realize how potent the movie The Ring was. Oh, well, man. And it, perhaps it was the Three Days Grace music that was uh, filling the house that gave them the determination to escape these fake ghosts that we were emulating. So, you know, you never know. Everything comes full circle, man. <laughs> you know, it's funny how scary um, that movie, you know, the idea of a. Mm staticky television you know that was i mean obviously yeah. the ring's good and if you've never seen the japanese the original ringu i mean it's very cool it, it's it, the ring's great it's same thing with yeah. the grudge you know but the original japanese horror movies oh. are terrifying so much scarier right there you go but yeah. the whole idea of a um of a tv that is on the you know on that show I mean, man, yeah. that's like Videodrome did that. Poltergeist Polter did that. It's scary yeah. to the point now that, I mean, we don't have that anymore because, you know, it, this just doesn't exist. I mean, it probably does somewhere, but I've never seen a scram. Like I've never seen a staticky TV unless someone's <laughs> doing it. I don't have tube TVs anymore. But I yeah. remember after all those movies, when I would fall asleep and I would wake up and the channel wasn't broadcasting anymore, it would either have that or it would have that round circle. Or whatever yeah. and it's still terrifying so it yeah yeah anyway so i don't know why we went on that um, well we ju we just had a uh, uh, this episode's going to come out a few weeks after the fact but we just had this random black uh blackout slash ice storm oh yeah in, uh, that Quebec, was crazy in Quebec. yeah the craziest one we've had since 1998 which is true I'll tell you kids but however, the the damage was done like an entire instead of five days, it was like one day. It was yeah, and quick. Generation Z had experienced horror in which they never experienced in their lives. They because couldn't get on the, the internet. Data <laughs> and Wi Fi didn't work for days. And everybody who has given up on their physical media had nothing to do. And you were probably swimming Dude. around in your Blu ray collection Dude. like Scrooge McDuck, Dude. just slinging around stuff. <laughs> my kids were, it was so funny because my son, because I still, you know, he lives with his mom, but there's still a lot yeah. of my, um, my blueprint still there in terms of like <laughs> some physical media that, you know, like oh, there's a huge D DVD collection. There's some Blu-rays that are there and my yeah. kids, you know, they, they know they have an appreciation for it because I've been chiseling it into their heads for years. How, you know, one day you'll see. And my son was like, dad, we couldn't stream anything. So <laughs> we had power, but we didn't have internet. So we were watching, like, he's like, I went and watched like episodes of the backyardigans that you had on DVD from when I was a kid. Like they were just going through and being nostalgic. And I was like, he's like, I yeah. understand your love for physical media now. And man, I'm telling you, dude, when the grid goes down and we still have power, cause you know, power and the internet are two different things, you know? Yeah. Like obviously the two in tandem were great, but you can have power and still have stuff to do without streaming. And everybody that's hooked on streaming services and everything's reliant on Wi-Fi, you mm -hmm. know, if you don't have regular cable, like those things all, you know, we're, we're so reliant on internet yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and on Wi-Fi and everything that that goes down. You're, you know, these people that are like, Oh, I have no physical media. I have nothing like my, my, my house, you know, looks like a, um, it looks like a, uh, you know, like a minimalist showroom. And I've got like this <laughs> one, one box where everything comes in. Well, that fucking box breaks down. You're fucked. Yeah. You know, yeah. you shouldn't put your eggs in one basket or yeah. a box. <laughs> I, and I like streaming like, like Me the too. next guy, like I stream too. And there's times, but man, there's something about physical media. There's something about, you know, yeah. dude, I physical media, like a three days gray CD and the great, uh, interview that we had today. Really cool stuff. We even talked to him a little bit about collecting and a little bit yeah. about reconciliation. It's a great interview. I'm yeah. It was, glad. It was, Thank you for having me a part of it, man. Well, of course, dude. I mean, it's, it, it's, it goes without saying that you always bring it, um, you know, a, another flavor to things and it's, it's, I, I'm glad that you got to chat with him. Cause I know you grew up listening to that mm. music and, and, and what, what's nice about Adam is he's one of those guys that was able to do almost the unthinkable, like stop, you know, walk away from a successful band, start another project and have it be successful as well. And that doesn't happen every day. You know, it does not happen every day. So hats off to him for that. And, um, well, 
it's a good interview. It was a fun chat, and uh, we're going to uh, jump to it right now. Here is our conversation with Adam Gontier from St. Asonia. There What's up? What's up, man? How you How doing? You doing man? Nice to meet you. Good. I don't think we. I don't know if we've met before. Um, no, I don't. I don't, I don't think so. Fans. No. I'm Jason. Um, this is my buddy Ryan. He's my co-host. I. Uh, What's up, man? Good. Hey. good. I work at Shome in Montreal. Okay, yeah. I used yeah. to play in a band called Slaves on Dope. So I think we might have met at one point or known yeah, some probably. people, know each other. But uh, but it's nice to probably, it's nice man. to chat. It's nice to finally chat because I've yeah. chatted with your ex bandmates a thousand fucking times. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I've yeah. Never got, of course. I've never gotten a chat to chat with you, so it's nice to oh, right on, nice man. To talk, man. Yeah. Yeah. So let me ask you. Um, right out of the gate, thanks for for joining us on the podcast. Uh, I, I, I I've got to ask you. What is the the concept of the introvert extrovert for the EP? Uh, Where did that well, come just, from? You know what the the first uh, EP introvert was written during the pandemic, um, right. and so you know the whole idea of not being able to to leave and being stuck at home and all that stuff. Um, I just kind of wrote those songs in my home studio during the pandemic, and then right. for extrovert, um, those songs were all written co written with other people. Oh, okay. So, so it's so, not, it's not the obvious thing you would think it's more being able to No, it's okay. yeah. Yeah. And I've been, I mean, over the years I've been told many, I mean, I mean, I'm sort of an introvert. And, uh, so, I mean, that was the idea for the first EP and it made sense. And then when we were discussing doing a second EP and stuff, uh, yeah, the idea of, of doing one called introvert and another one called extrovert seemed to make sense, you know? I uh, I really like when people go after themes, and you're seeing a lot more of that in music. Um, like Weezer did that with the, with the EPs with the seasons, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah so it's nice. Yeah. It's nice. I, I think it just adds something to, you know. Also the whole the whole business model, if you will, of the EP um, lends mm-hmm. itself to being able to put out more more often, um, having a bit, you know, having a bit of firepower behind something that might be smaller, and then be able to have something else that comes out a little bit later. But but it, it yeah. just it's just a nice, um, and it's nice when they come together as a body of work yeah, too. Yeah, for sure. I, I've always been a fan of that sort of thing. Like, uh, I, I seem to remember system of a down doing mesmerize and hypnotize those yeah. two. Yeah. I mean, they were full yeah. records, but, uh, that, that whole thing was just super cool. So I, I've always kind of wanted to do something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. The duality of those, uh, two albums were really cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you were mentioning introvert and extrovert, I was thinking about, yeah, during COVID, I had a I had an introvert haircut and an extrovert right. haircut later on, <laughs> where right. my hair was extremely long. I called it, uh, uh, you know, evil evil Spock version of me or something. Uh, but yeah. dude, uh, I, I gotta say, man, I've been hearing your voice like my entire life, and uh, I, listening to your new music, what what is fundamentally prominent in old projects, new projects, is how much, you know what you bring to a project, especially with the tone of your voice, you sound exactly the same, if not even better, more refined. Oh, and uh, I, what I really like about this new music, and and this is a big compliment coming from me, but I, I swear it screams wrestling video game music. And this is how you can make 20,000 people get up on your feet right away and chant mm-hmm. in unison. Right. Have you ever yeah. actually had your music involved in the WWE at all? Um, you know, I think back in three days, grace, I believe we mm. were on, uh, like I think riot and, uh, uh, there was another song. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, we were, we were on like SmackDown versus raw or something like that. Okay. Or, um, just a video game that, uh, but no, not recently. And it's, uh, yeah, I've thought about that many times. Uh, just, you know, seeing, seeing some wrestling stuff on TV and, um, I mean, there's so, there's, there's a lot of. A lot of great music out there that they use for that stuff, but yeah. Breaking the Mold and Wolf could easily, easily be the right. theme to WrestleMania. Like, no problem. Right. Absolutely. Maybe we need to hire you, man. For <laughs> I think I'm going to, I'm just going to say, maybe Ryan's yeah. very passionate about wrestling. Yeah. And Ryan has a, you know, Ryan, yeah. you, you hang out with Ryan. And I was with Ryan. And we ended up being first row at wrestling right. in Montreal. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but it was, nice. a, I turned into a, 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 this 52 year old turned into a 15 year old. So no, I um, hear you, man. Yeah, I was a big fan growing up with it. You know, WWE, all the or WWF at the time. Yeah, um, there you go. yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, I actually went to a WrestleMania, not not an actual live WrestleMania. You know, back in the day, they used yeah. to 
you'd be you could they'd sell tickets and you'd go to your local arena and watch it on right, a, yeah, like close really? to the TV, on a big yeah. screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did that a few times for a couple of WrestleManias. And uh, yeah, I was a big fan. Like so yeah, I mean, that'd be cool for sure. Um, you're heading out on the road. Um, you're, uh, is this the first time you guys have been out since pandemic or have you been doing some touring? Like, have you been back out on the road? No, we've been out. We, we actually just got done a tour with, um, uh, theory of a dead man at skillet in okay. the U S right. So that was a, that was a six week tour. It was pretty long. Um, and, uh, yeah, we've done some festival shows here and there and yeah. So we've started back up. I mean, it must, for, it, yeah, it, it must feel good, right? Yeah, it feels great, man. It's so so nice to be back out. It's uh, yeah, it's crazy. Like you, you, whenever you're out on the road for a long period of time, you start to really miss being home, and you want to be home, and and then you get you know something like that happens, and you get home, and you can't you know you can't go out on the road. Yeah. It's you start to realize what you know. It's uh, it's easy to take things for granted, you know. Um, but yeah, no, it's great to be back out. I think there's a big difference. We were talking to um, uh, someone in our episode about how kind of like there's this defining moment when people realize they're a professional touring musician and they just want to party. And mm -hmm. I think a large part of the pandemic, what really uh, drew a line in the sand is the people who can function on the road of just being like, I'm here to play music. Mm -hmm. And then the other people are like, if I don't have 50 people in a room cheering me on at my every uh silly uh waking moment mm -hmm. uh, what's the point of doing this so do you find yourself like you were a professional like you were kind of like not there to party and you're really there to play for a few years and it's a little easier to jump back on the road now as a result yeah for sure man i mean there we i've been doing it for like well been in the band for a long had a band for a long time but but touring and stuff i've been doing it for about 20 years and um after the first few years you start to you start to realize that you, you're not really probably not going to last too long just partying every night and i've seen i've toured with um we've toured with so many bands over the years that come out and uh you know they get they get a record deal and they have a song on the radio and they're just like you know they just they're on top of the world and they party hard and uh a year later they're they're nowhere to be found so yeah it's uh it's one of those things it's it's definitely you got to work pretty hard and keep your head on straight if you can, you know, and that was a challenge for me for many years, but, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, you gotta be a, a professional for sure when touring. Oh yeah. yeah. And especially in this day and age, I mean, it's um, you know, things are so unforgiving now um, and, mm -hmm. and people, things move so quickly that people are, are, are very fast to move on from something once there's anything about it that remotely um, disinterests them or shows some kind of weakness. They're just like, I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm onto something that, you know, that's that I'm on yeah. to the next moving train. So, um, yep. but, one, but one thing that's very impressive about, you know, what you've been able to do and, and a lot of musicians, you know, being a former musician, being from Canada, um, I don't think people realize how hard it was at one point for Canadian bands to actually break in the U S um, it's not something that's a given. You can be a massive band in Canada. I mean, talk about the tragically hip massive mm -hmm. Canadian band. were are never mm -hmm. able to break outside of Canada. So mm -hmm. the fact that you were able to do that um, twice is an amazing accomplishment because that is obviously, you know, professionally as a musician, the brass ring has always been America in a lot of people's mm -hmm. minds. So the fact that you right. were able to do that and the success that you were able to have at rock radio just shows how good of a songwriter you are. But do, do you remember that first time when you were, when you realized like, Hey man, like, yeah, we've got success in Canada, but we're starting to pop in America. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing about our whole, when we, when we first signed, when Three Days Grace first signed our our record deal, it was really important because we we had grown up with those bands, Our Lady Peace and yeah. Tragically Hip, and all that, all the you know Canadian bands, and um, most of them, or you know a good chunk of them, yeah, they weren't they weren't known in the states at all. And it was we, I mean, we were able to see that those bands weren't necessarily. Uh, we didn't think they'd be able to sustain without breaking in the states, like for. You know, long time. so anyway, when we when we had some interest from labels and stuff, we wanted to sign an American record deal that was really important for us. So that's what we did. We we shopped all our music to uh, just American labels and then signed the deal in the U.S. and then brought it to Canada from there. So, um, yeah, we just wanted to make sure that we weren't going to going to end up uh, being in that situation where where we could, you know, play arenas in 
uh, Canada and not have anybody else know who we are, you know? Yeah. And, 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 you know, some bands had like, you know, OLP did have that, like that on clumsy, they did have that spot Mm -hmm. where, you know, when they were opening for Van Halen and all that, Mm -hmm. but it's really hard for a lot of bands to sustain that. And that's, what's incredible about, you know, about you and, and it was St. Sonia. I mean, you guys are probably playing the same size rooms in either market, if not maybe smaller rooms in Canada and bigger rooms. Mm -hmm. So, which is crazy when you think you're from Toronto, you're from Mm -hmm. Ontario, you know, that's, that's a huge Mm -hmm. accomplishment, man. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's just always been pretty important. Um, just, you know, and, in, in I mean, there's just so many more people in the States and, uh, you know, just to, yeah, like we said, just to try to sustain and have a, have a long lasting career. It's, I feel like you, you have to really try to break in the U S as well as Canada. So yeah, I'm very fortunate that it's happened, you know, and it's, it, it's stayed sort of consistent. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, I was listening to the new uh, record Oh, well, the new EP. And uh, there was definitely a little bit, well, I found a little bit of an industrial flair to the guitar sound. And I want to know, like, just as a riff maker and singer, like, who who would you say is, like, your influence as a singer and then as a guitar player as well, considering you do both? Yeah, that's uh, it's a tough one, man. I mean, singing-wise, like, I, I grew up listening to, I, I think my biggest influence growing up were probably uh Pearl Jam and uh Alice in Chains and the Tragically Hip those three bands were nice. like my you know my my favorites growing up and um yeah so uh, but as for playing guitar and stuff I I've just always it's kind of the same thing like the the Seattle scene um when I was like 12 13 14 starting to play guitar I was listening to those bands and that's when I was starting to write music and stuff so I was pretty, I, I've always kept it really simple, just, you know, with a clean, a heavy and a heavier uh, channel. And that's it. I mean, that's all I use. And I think it that just, yeah, comes from probably the Seattle thing and, you know, the grungy, grungy type stuff. I've always kept it pretty, pretty raw. But I, I guess on the new EP, I, I think the the tones and stuff, it, you know, it probably comes down to Anton, our, our producer, Anton DeLost, uh, mm. you know, just matching some different tones from different artists and that sort of thing mm-hmm. and just trying to come up with something a little bit a little bit unique but uh yeah i've always tried to keep it fairly simple and i mean we i'd be remiss if we didn't say you know th- this is a bit of a super group because your guitar player was also in a, a band that was you know i mean fuck talk about hits mm-hmm. <laughs> i think stain yeah. i think stain had a couple too yeah um, they had a couple it, yeah. it, might, it must it must be nice when the two of you can and i imagine you you co-write together right Mm -hmm. yeah it's got to be nice to be able to bounce off you know ideas off someone um who who has a track record like both of you do you know for sure it's it's got to be a comfort to me feeling from you to say hey man i've got someone here that i can like i can lean on and and together you know i mean the proof is in the pudding i mean the music's phenomenal so um, thanks man are there is there ever a time where you're like man i really fucking won the lottery by starting this thing with this guy (laughs) well yeah i mean all the time and it's it's and i'm sure it's vice versa for him i'm sure it's vice versa for him so right you know it's crazy because we we were friends before we started the band we we had toured together with staying at three days grace and and stuff so um when i left three days grace he reached out to me and he was one of the first few people that that reached out and he was he was actually working on music for a solo record um and uh with some guest singers and stuff so he asked if i'd want to be a part of that and right. So we got together to just kind of work on a song and we didn't have much of a plan of starting a band or writing any more than the one song, but yeah, it just worked really well. He had some great music and I was coming up with a bunch of good melodies and stuff that he liked. So it just meshed really well. And then before we knew it, we had like five or six songs and we decided to just go for it, you know? So yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I think, yeah, the, the coolest part is that we've been friends for all these years, even, you know, when our, our old bands touring with each other and stuff. And then this opportunity came up and yeah, it's just, uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. To be able to do it with, with such a talent, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wanted to uh, ask about touring. You mentioned touring. Um, <laughs> I'm always asking everybody this all the time now, just based on the fact that 20 years ago, there's nothing much to do in a van except listen to a discman and maybe read a book. But now mm-hmm. there's all this, technology tablets and everything uh what's going what's you're gonna like go to when traveling like what's the show podcast something that you uh, actually are like awesome nine hour drive i got this well uh on a nine hour drive or around there <laughs> it's probably 
probably split up by about eight hours of sleeping and then uh, <laughs> an hour of like video games, man. Like, <clears throat> to be honest, we're bring I mean, off the we're, games, man. Which ones? Come on. Well, we're all like we're mainly about the sports games. We are in this band. Like we, okay. we like to we like to kind of beat each other up at <laughs> hockey or baseball or Madden or whatever. So it's usually that um, we do have uh, we we were getting into some UFC uh mm. the last run just a little bit but uh yeah it's mainly mainly we'll just kind of we'll just get pretty competitive with the sports games while traveling on the bus so are you uh are you are you a ufc fan uh yeah sort of i mean not i would i wouldn't say i'm a i wouldn't call myself a fan no because I, I mean i i don't know too much about it but but you I mean, but I'm you not, but you watch and you like you'll watch highlights have, and you keep up to yeah. date right mm. not really but okay. i i watch uh <laughs> I watch the odd time, but it's funny you say UFC and, and sports games and, um, it, video games is one thing that I know a lot of people will, will spend time. It's something that I don't know if it's my age. I'm 52. Mm. I have, I just, and maybe it's the dexterity thing. Like I have, I can do a couple of button mashers, but the controls and all that, like I can't, and you guys that play sports games. I don't mm-hmm. get it, man. I, I try, mm. I've tried. I just get so frustrated. How long did it take right. for you to get like, you know, to be able to move- I, we've been playing those games like kale and i have been uh i mean we've been playing those games since we were like i don't know 12 you know 10 mm-hmm. 11 years old or whatever okay. playing playing like you know early nhl games and stuff so we've always played yeah. it and so it's, of yeah. course we have i mean i have a couple of really small kids and he's got a couple of small kids so you know we don't play them at home ever like i don't have right. a i don't have a setup here and anything like that but but when we get yeah i mean this last six week tour we were like there was a, a ps4 on the bus and we're like we're gonna have to we're gonna hit have that to arc. get back into it yeah, <laughs> yeah so so that's kind of the deal it's not really something we do at home anymore or you know it's it's not something we get together to play video games against you know with each other but yeah man i don't know we just we just always have since we were kids so what would you say uh in general besides like you know being a music obviously you're a music fan but uh on this podcast we talk to people about pop culture and a lot of things like what is something that you would say you're like you're a fan of something you'd stand in line for because we work for comic cons and stuff like that and we see that kind of stuff all the time but what's something Mm -hmm. that you would say that you love it so much that you would actually weigh in line for it Hmm. yeah i mean that's that's a tough one man (laughs) that's a that's a good question um you know, my my life over the last few years has changed quite a bit, quite drastically, because I have a I have a five year old and an almost two year old. So Ooh, you're in the thick basically, of it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like the you know, so yeah. you know, basically, I'd I'd stand in line for like the Wiggles if they were coming. To, <laughs> Did you? Okay, you know what I mean? I met uh, the Wiggles with my kids, and I arranged oh, yeah. for it, dude. I me. used yeah. I used whatever juice I had to get my kids to meet the Wiggles. You have to do that. You know what's funny is I've been uh, I I was just talking to uh, Matt Matt Walsh, um, singer for Three Days Grace, yep. current yep. singer mm-hmm. for Three Days Grace. Yep. We've been chatting a lot about that. And his his kid, um, his young young kid, is a huge Wiggles fan, and he did the same thing. He pulled out Matt pulled out the big guns to uh, he dropped the hammer and reached out to Anthony, and Anthony got back, and now they're buds and they'll they'll chat quite often. But but yeah, so. It seems like within the music community, like all of us cool, like rock guys, we're all just kind of like, can you hook us up with the Wiggles, you know, on the side? (laughs) I, I, my son, my son, uh, my son has hemophilia. So, um, and I remember my friend, you probably know Rose Slanik. Um, Mm -hmm. my friend, yeah. So my friend Rose, who I've been friends with for years, um, she, she's like, look, I know someone that works for their management company. Um, and I hate to do this, but. Nathan has a disability, right? I go, yeah, well, he has hemophilia, but we don't, you know, it's not something we broadcast. She goes, you're going to need to, because the only people that meet are kids that have disabilities. Oh, is that right? And I was like, I mean, he does, but you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I, mean, yeah. I, it, it, dude, that picture, you know, with my son going like this, mm-hmm. and my daughter, like she was like a turnip. It was just, it's priceless. So I yeah. Hear, oh, Wiggles, yeah. took my kids to the Wiggles, took my kids to uh, Yo Gabba Gabba. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, have they done Thomas the train yet? Uh, a little bit. Uh, he, my, my son did, but he's yeah. seems to be a little bit over that. I guess now he's all about Mario and Sonic and stuff. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So you're, you're good. You're sailing, man. That's... Yeah. We're, 
Yeah, but my my two year old daughter is just on the cusp of all that, you know, all the all the stuff. So yeah. So really, I don't stand in line for anything, man. I won't, uh, you know, <laughs> only only kid stuff, really. You know, uh, you're um, you're obviously you you know you you know you you mentioned Matt. Um, there's there's been a major breakthrough with you and Neil. I mean, that was well documented about a year ago or whatever when you guys sat down. And everyone made a big deal of it. I mean, we've all been there. Um, where we've mm-hmm. had a friend that we haven't talked to and then you sit down mm-hmm. and I've done it. You know, I remember my guitar player and I did it. We had a five-year break where we didn't talk at all. Mm-hmm. And then we sat down at an all-night diner for six hours. And then mm-hmm. the next day we called each other every day and it's like nothing fucking happened. Right. Uh, I'm I'm finding this out now. Please go on. Okay. <laughs> so but what, <laughs> no, but what, but what's amazing about that is that um, when you get older, when you have kids, when you have families, you start to just say, hey, life is precious. Life is short. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you're able to have some perspective with it. Are you, you must be really glad that you guys are able to all chat now and, and have a great relationship. It's gotta be. It's yeah, gotta, for sure. You gotta feel for better, sure. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, uh, I think it was 10 years, basically, you know, wow. roughly 10 years that we hadn't, we hadn't talked at all. So yeah, it's, it's nice to be, to be back in touch. And, and you said it perfectly. It's the, um, you know, just after having, having some kids and getting older and stuff, you start to, you start to realize what, what's important in life and, you know, holding, holding grudges from when you're a bit younger about things that don't really matter anymore. doesn't, doesn't make sense. And yeah, life's too short, man, too short to, to do that, to hold grudges for, you know, for no real reason. So yeah, it's great, man, you know, back in touch and uh, talking a lot and, um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, yeah, it's great to, you know, they, we were all pretty, pretty good friends before, before the band even really started. So, um, yeah, it's nice to be back in touch and hanging out and stuff. Yeah. And I predict, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm looking at a crystal ball, but I could see something really cool happening with all you guys at one point. I mean, it would make sense. It would make sense to see everybody out there together, you know? Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Could, you, know, you know, obviously know, with, guess, with, yeah. with, 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 you know, with schedules permitting and all that, it would be mm-hmm. nice to see that, but, but dude, really, yeah. um, I, I got to commend you, man. You're a phenomenal songwriter. You're a great singer. And, um, and I'm so glad that, you know, that you found a writing partner and that you guys have been able to put out this project, which is great, you know? Um, Thanks, and, man. and it just has, it just has, uh, it has a great, like Ryan was, you know, was alluding to it. Like there's, you know, there's just this, there's just something about your voice that just seems to have gotten better as you've gotten older. And I don't know, because oh, awesome, it man. usually goes the other way. It's a lot of times guys mm-hmm. can lose it, you know? I mean, yeah. there's, yeah. I can't do any of this stuff I used to do when I was in my twenties. Like just not impossible. Right. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, I, I appreciate it, man. I, th- I, I mean, um, I, the only thing that I can really attribute any of the, um, that to is probably just being healthier, like, uh, right. just in general, I'm a healthier person than I used to be. I, you know, I battled with drugs and alcohol for years and years and years up until about five years ago when my son was born well, about six years ago. Um, right. so yeah, um, that's, I, I mean, now, you know, just being quite a bit healthier and looking after myself and, um, yeah, I, I think. I mean, that's the only thing that's really, that's really changed. Um, but yeah, I've been super fortunate that I haven't had, I haven't had anything, uh, like really wrong, uh, happen to my voice. Like so many singers and guys I know after tours and, you know, singing every night, they end up with polyps or nodes or whatever on their, on their throat and turns into surgery. And then it just changes everything. So yeah, I've been very, very fortunate that that's never happened. Um, you know, so yeah, I'll just kind of keep doing what I'm doing, I guess. You know? <laughs> Obviously you're doing something right. It's right. A, I'm it's not a, sure what it is, but yeah. Healthier no, just, living you, and wiggles. Yeah. It's something. Right. It's something exactly, in between yeah. there. It's warming uh, up to the wiggle. Your voice has a lot of wiggle here. room. You, the, ah, God, right. I see what you did there. Wake yeah, up, well, Jeff. Well, well, um, he's saying, he's saying <laughs> dad jokes though. So he's kind of onto something here. Right? Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, Ryan, you'd be an amazing dad. I got to Well, you. I don't have a I don't have a kid, but I have a cat, so I guess it's a cat joke in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. works. Oh. oh. Uh, I really sunk my sunk my paws into that one. Adam, anyway, sorry. Thanks for taking oh, the time geez. to chat today, man. I know you got a lot of people to talk to. Um but but continued success. Uh, you're going to be playing in Montreal in May. Yeah. Um yeah. I'm looking I've never seen this band live, so I'm definitely coming awesome. to the show. Um and I'm looking yeah. forward to uh to saying hi in, in in real life and and 
man, just keep doing your thing, dude. You're, you're, you're killing it. Um, you're, you, you seem to be in a really good spot and, uh, and you know, I hope you get to meet the Wiggles if you haven't yet. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, a, me too, it, man. it's an incredible feeling, man. It's an incredible. I have, I, I do have a feeling that one day it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Know, just, it's going to happen. Yeah. Oh, uh, thanks so much. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thanks so much. Remember, no, w- I, I wiggles really and wrestling. It. Let's all cross our fingers for wiggles right. and wrestling in your future. Right. Maybe, okay. maybe we merge the two together at some point. It's a, some kind of festival. I don't know. Just. I, I would love to watch the Wiggles wrestle. It'd be very interesting. <laughs> that would be, all yeah. Right. For sure. All right. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, man. Of course, man. Thank you, guys. Right. Yeah, I'm really glad that it authentically came up, you know, in not a shock rock, uh, clickbait seeking bullshit kind of way. That, uh, you know, Adam brought up that him and Matt have been talking and, you know, they have kids and, and, uh, that kind of relationship. It's, it's super, it's super cool. And it's, it's funny how I'm sure many rock rivalries in the world have been elongated based on press coverage, you know, of, 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 of he said, she said, of course, shit. And, and and Glenn Matlock on our show told yeah. a story about how him and Sid Vicious not only were they not enemies, they played they started a band, band together, together and played after. a gig. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. And you know, there you go. You, you know, you talk about Adam and Matt chatting. I mean, technically, Matt is the guy that took Adam's job after mm-hmm. Adam left. And a lot of people, when Adam left, were like, Three Days Grace are fucked. This mm-hmm. that they're done. And quite the contrary, they ended up being very successful without him. So yeah. there's so many emotions around that, you know, and the fact that everyone's been able to bury all the hatchet and like, you know, him calling the new lead singer and them talking about their kids and the wiggles and it's great. But what, you know, Spidey sense started tingling when he was saying that. And I mm. said it in the interview, I would not be surprised. I'm going to call it. I would not yeah. be surprised if three days grace end up doing a tour with both singers at one point. I would not. Of course. And then surprised. in the encore set, he comes on stage and, you know, does uh some dual singing for the for the hits that's what i do that's kind of like what i wish van halen could have got together well, yeah. I, I, I wish the sammy singers did dave, it the singers yeah. did it yeah yeah they did it dave yeah. and sammy went out together they but did they never did it with van halen but that would no. have been the fucking bomb and this is another opportunity and i'm sure the guys in three mm. days grace are probably like you know man we've got a great career with two different singers we've got yeah two different fucking catalogs with different singers. We should blend the two together and give fans the ultimate experience. And if Van Halen would have fucking done that, yeah, that would have been fucked. Like Sk- Skid Row it's have cool. the fans would love that if Skid Row did that, but you know, they haven't been able to really see eye to eye and it's unfortunate. Yeah. But then again, sometimes you get those experiences where when listening to Adam's new music and, you know, hearing three days, Grace's music. And of course uh, we've had members of three days, Grace on the show too. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting how there's, there's room in the world for both these bands and it doesn't seem to be intruding on each other no, whatsoever. Not at all. It's kind of and like the Peter Gabriel, uh, Peter Gabriel, and uh, Genesis. Genesis, thing. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, really. and and you know, it's. I think time heals all wounds when it comes mm. to those kind of things. And um, you know, being someone who has been in a band with different people over the years, and and uh, you know, my my our old bass player's dad passed away, and when I got word of that, I mean he came back to Montreal. There was a funeral. Like I went, gave him a hug. Like I knew his dad, you know, mm-hmm. and we spent time with his parents a lot. So to be able to realize what's important in life and, yeah. and look past whatever differences and pettiness that you might've had, it, it's a nice feeling to get to because when you have had, you know, any kind of impact as an artist, especially, I mean, you're looking at that band had such an impact. Um, and to be able to look back on that fondly and not have, negative feelings about it it's just so freeing you know yeah it doesn't bog on you and and it's yeah it's nice it's nice that they're that he's gotten to that point and um yeah man i'm i'm i love that i love this conversation it was great and uh adam's just a nice you know he's canadian dude like canadians are nice people canadian famous is very different from other famous yes it is (laughs) it is um and uh, and i'm glad we got to touch on the fact that um they were you know bigger the bigger in america both bands than they were here Mm -hmm. even 
and not that they weren't big here, but man, like, fuck, they were huge. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because he was mentioned, you were mentioning how a band can play a stadium in Canada and seem like nothing in the States. That's that happened very late into the, um, uh, yeah, that you pretty much just described the tragically hip. They were still playing clubs in the States and then the next day would go to Canada and play a stadium. Dude, like that's <laughs> insane. You know, Tea Party are, are, you know, they're a big band um, and they've played massive rooms. When I was, I happened to be in California with my friend, Sonny, yeah. and he was a massive Tea Party fan. And it was actually um, the singer of Cold Chamber, Des, who okay. got him into Tea Party. And he was mm-hmm. like, you've got to hear this band from Canada. They're incredible. So Sonny was really- I can't picture the guy singing Me Loco is just like, you know, stop singing Me Loco and says, have you heard- Heaven's falling down. Dude, I'm telling you, he was a huge Tea Party fan, massive Tea Party fan. And they were one of those bands that, you know, musicians were into them. And it was really fun to go to a Tea Party show in LA and they Mm. played the Roxy. The Roxy holds 300, 350 people. Maybe more. Wow. Maybe, okay. And then maybe they come here and they're playing the Metropolis or, or two nights or, or bigger, or, or bigger yeah. you know? So yeah, yeah. it's cool to see a band stateside that is big in Canada when they play small places. So can you imagine those guys that went to those tragically hip shows in Buffalo or in Vermont? Yeah. <laughs> like it must've been amazing when, you know, they're so yeah, it's, 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 it's quite the feat to see a Canadian band have a career, not only internationally, but in America, because it's tough. It's not easy. It's not easy being someone who's done it. It's not easy. It is not an easy thing. And there's so many Canadian bands, but even Canada, we're not really great at celebrating our own. We only take our actors seriously when they go make it in the States and then come back. Yes. Yeah. Mike Myers wrote a book about being Canadian and in it, he was talking about uh, John Candy and how John Candy, they we used to give him like a two hour call time earlier because they knew he would stop and talk to everybody (laughs) on the street that want to say hi to him. Sure. But he was in an airport and uh, someone was asking him, all right, so you're flying back to uh, Los Angeles? He's like, no, no, I still live in Toronto. And they're like, oh, but I, I thought you were like a big deal. I yeah, thought you were famous. I know. Yeah. You know, it's nice when, you know, there's there's something about somebody sticking to their roots or choosing to be somewhere where they're comfortable. You know, like Dave Chappelle being in Ohio. Yeah. Like, I love that, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, Adam's a, Adam's a sweet guy. And, uh, and again, we've had, you know, we've had Neil and Matt on the show. Yeah. We've talked to Adam, you know, you can see how these were people that all got along at one point and are continuing to get along because they're just nice guys who happen yeah. to write fucking killer songs. I mean, God. Anthemic, anthemic songs yeah. without having to sound anthemic. Like it's, it, it's strange. It's like, it's got a, um, you know, when they play, when, when you hear it by chorus number two, you know, what's up. Yeah. And yeah. and it's not lazy. It's just um, it's accessible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was, it was definitely um, definitely a nice time, and I'm glad we got a chance to have him on the show. Uh, but we got to go, dude. We got a lot of stuff we to do. get ready for because we have so many rad guests coming up, and um, we have to. Uh, I don't know. We got to prepare, I guess, or we just got to just down tons and tons of our beet hot sauce. <laughs> I love that segue. <laughs> thank you. Uh, want to uh, thank again our title sponsor, Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Uh, without them, we would not be able to do this podcast. So thank you to them. Use our promo code ROCKMAN20, which you will see right there. And that'll give you 20% off your entire order. And you can use that code over and over again. Uh, makes a great gift too, you know, with Mother's Day and Father's Day coming up. And if oh, you yeah. want to, you know, get something, oh, what do I get mom? What do I get dad? Get them heartbeat. You get them a six pack of this and you can choose what you want to put in your six pack. Send it to them. They will be happy. Everybody, Ryan, likes hot sauce. I don't know anyone that doesn't like hot sauce. You can the use these hot sauces as thinly veiled threats to people who are allergic to pineapple. <laughs> Thanks again to Studio House Designs as well. Uh, Our thanks to, yes, looking good. Our thanks uh, to our uh, producer, Julia Kajerski. Thanks to my co-host, Ryan Stick. And thanks to all of you. Thanks to all of you for being on this journey with us. And don't forget, like, subscribe, um, hit the alert button so you will be told when we drop new episodes. And if you are listening to us, we're available on all streaming services for your audio podcast. And of course, on YouTube, if you are watching our beautiful faces, which you should do because God, we're good looking people, right? Um, my He's mother seems, I'm my just mother, gonna my say my mother seems, tells me the so. same thing. Yeah. My well, I think your mother is a very good looking person. So, uh, and know. on that note, we're going to stop yeah. now before this podcast ends in a very bad way. We'll see you next week on the Rockman Power Hour. Don't you ever fucking talk about it.